So welcome to another episode of Rogers Tech Talk. In this episode, we're gonna talk about T-Mobile 5G internet. So both T-Mobile and Verizon have been pushing 5G internet down the throats through ads. I even had a Verizon person accost me in my driveway about a year ago, trying to sign me up for 5G. Honestly, I thought it was stupid, but then the more I thought about it, I was, you know, having a, another internet provider that was actually really fast as a backup, and it's wireless, seemed like a cool idea. So I finally decided to give it a try and see how it works. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I like the T-Mobile 5G servers so far. I'm gonna do speed tests inside and outside the house. Outside is gonna be in the optimal location direction the T-Mobile says the modem should be. I'm gonna go through some tweaks that you have to make to get the modem working with your own home router. Um, in my case, I use PFSense. We'll talk about some of the complexities there to get that working perfectly. Then I'm gonna go through how to disable the built-in Wi-Fi hotspot on this guy because you definitely don't wanna use that. You wanna use what you already have. And I'm just gonna go um, some overall um, other thoughts about leveraging this with Home Assistant and other security services you might have inside your house. So what I decided to do was see the difference between having the T-Mobile modem, what you see right now is my network rack and running a wire from my PSense router all throughout side my house uh, to the optimal location where the T-Mobile app says the modem should be to get the best signal. So I ran a really long ethernet cable, put the T-Mobile modem outside and ran speed tests to see the difference. So first I wanted to do a speed test outside to see the, the best speeds that we could possibly get with the T-Mobile 5G service. So as you can see, the speeds are pretty damn good. We're getting over 400 megabits here. We're almost at, yeah, we're at 470, which, which is awesome. The upload speed uh, is definitely really, really good. Um, you know, for a long, long time with Comcast, I only had about 40 megabits upload and we're getting, uh, you know, a maximum of 70 here. So this is a speed test when it sets outside in the optimal direction. Now switching back to the, where the modem normally is inside, we're gonna see the speeds are still really good, but they're definitely not as good as they were outside. We're getting around 230, 225 megabits per second download. And if we take at the up, look, take a look at the upload here, it's definitely most likely, yeah, not gonna, yeah, it's, it's it's still pretty good, but definitely not as good as it was outside. You know, we were seeing around 70 and we're seeing. Now let's hear a word from our sponsor, TurboDocs. This video is sponsored by TurboDocs. Are you tired of building documents or presentations for your business? Wouldn't it be great if there was something that could help automate building proposals, design documents, or even legal agreements? TurboDocs is a document and slide deck templating platform that can help you make documents in just a few clicks. What they do is break down the template into small building blocks that can be reused over and over again. This really gives you a great starting point to move quickly and efficiently. When it's all said and done, you can crank out a proposal or any other document in under a minute. This way you can focus on what you're doing best, building cool stuff and leave their paperwork and presentations to TurboDocs. So to turn off the Wi-Fi hotspot built onto this device, it's not so simple. T-Mobile doesn't give you the ability to turn off the Wi-Fi hotspot completely using the mobile app or using their uh, built-in website that you have accessing the modem. I don't know why that's the case. I, I get that you'd want to have a Wi-Fi hotspot on your modem, but a lot of people using this want to use their own. So why don't just have a little checkbox to disable it? So opening up the T-Mobile 5G app on my iPhone, I can find the Wi-Fi network that it's created. I go to delete it and it doesn't work. So to be able to turn off the Wi-Fi on this completely, we have to leverage the web-based API and query that either with a, um, some community-made scripts or in my case, I'm gonna show you an example of using the PowerShell script or using Postman so we can send API requests to this and turn off the Wi-Fi hotspot. Basically, we have to use our username and password we set on the modem to create what's called a bearer token. This will allow us to do API calls to the modem. Once we get this bearer token, we can go into Postman and send a request to the specific page, which disables the Wi-Fi access point. And basically, we're just sending a JSON file, so a configuration document to the modem, telling it to basically disable the radio for the Wi-Fi access point on here. 
So the first thing we're gonna do is send a post request to the off slash login page using our username and password we have set on the T-Mobile 5G modem. To do this, we'll make sure our context type is set to application slash JSON, and we're just pasting that username and password in the JSON body. So once we do this and send a post request, we're gonna get our token there, and that's gonna be our bearer token, and we're gonna use this and put this in the authorization header anytime we're making other requests. So the next step here is we're gonna send a get request to the configuration uh, page. And this is gonna get the JSON file that the T-Mobile modem reads for its Wi-Fi configuration. So you can see there in the authorization header, we uh, have our bearer token. So once we're able to get this JSON file, we're basically going to paste it in the body um, and we're going to change a few values to be able to um, set it uh, differently on the, um, on the modem. So pasting in the body here, we're gonna go to is radio enabled and we're gonna set that from true to false for both the 2.4 and five gigahertz radios on the modem. So once we do this, we just have to make sure that also, um, just like we did in when we're actually getting the configuration in the headers, we have the authorization token there, so our bearer token, and also we have to make sure that the context type is set to application slash JSON. Uh, when I was doing this, for some reason, I thought it was text <laughs> slash JSON, but it's application slash JSON that needs to, to be there um, for, for it to work. So once we have have everything set up, we've modified the data in the JSON, we're gonna send the request. And you can see in my first test here, it didn't work. So I need to actually make sure that I set this as a post request, not a get request. So once we do that, it's gonna take a few minutes. So once we're telling it to change anything with the Wi-Fi radio on the modem, it's gonna to have to reset a bunch of things, so um, just wait there. Once it's successful, you'll see a status 200 uh, message received. So if you decide to use the PowerShell file that it's available on GitHub, it's basically doing, we're doing the exact same thing as we did with Postman. We're providing the admin username and password. It's using the invoke rest command in PowerShell to get the bearer token and write it to a variable in PowerShell. There's a nice menu on here to, to determine what you wanna do if you wanna turn the Wi-Fi on or off. But basically the way it's working exactly the same, it's running the git command to get download that JSON file that has the configuration for the Wi-Fi access point, writing to a file, and then basically just changing from the is radio enabled from true to false, and then setting another API command to set, um, basically upload that new JSON file to the T-Mobile modem. I wish T-Mobile would have made it a lot easier, but what the heck, it was a little fun actually, just getting to see how to work with this behind the scenes. Um, but for the average person, re really sort of annoying. The one thing to be aware of is when using this for systems like Home Assistant, which if you watch some of my other videos, I use as my home automation platform of choice. If you were to have that configured in terms of having users connect directly into your system um, and not go through outbound proxy such as uh, Nabucasa or Cloudflare, you're gonna not be able to do that with a, a 5G cell phone service. The reason for that is all the cell providers use something called carrier grade NAT, network address translation. And this basically gives a large number of users the same IP address. So you don't have your own unique IP address. You can't do port forwarding into the modem. You can only do outbound connections to another server, which then you connect to. So you'll, you'll see some videos out there that talk about, oh, the way to get around carrier grade NAT for incoming connection. There, there really is no way. There are certain types of VPNs out there like Tailscale, which instead of having a connection inbound to your network, you're establishing a connection first outbound to another server, and then you connect to that other server then forth into your network. So it's really not true um, you know, connections in. Just, just be aware of that. If you do, um, don't leverage Nabucasa right now for Home Assistant, you're connecting directly into your, um, your system, 
you're not going to be able to do that with a 5G service like the ones from T-Mobile due to that carrier grade NAT. So if you're not familiar with MTU, it's a MAC transmission unit. So normally this is 1500, something you don't really modify or set um, for your normal home internet. But when you're using uh, a cell phone provider like T-Mobile or other ones, they use a lower MTU size. In the case of T-Mobile, that's 1420. If you don't set this lower MTU size on your router when you hook up the T-Mobile service, the speeds are gonna be really slow. So let's take an example here and see what it's like leaving it at the default of 1500, and then what it's like turning it down to 1420. So funny enough, when I went to try the speed test between the diff different MTU sizes with T-Mobile, for some reason I couldn't get slower speeds with the normal 1500 MTU. So I went on Reddit and posted to see if anybody had any ideas. Others are saying they're getting the same experience, really no difference in speed with that higher MTU size. I swear though, when I first set up T-Mobile, I was getting really bad speeds with the default 1500 MTU and switching it to 1420 fixed it, but it doesn't seem to make a huge difference now, even though you should still use 1420 uh, due to packet fragmentation. On PSense, be sure to disable, basically uncheck the option that says block private addresses. If you do not do this, the T-Mobile service will not work with PFSense because since the T-Mobile modem, like I mentioned earlier, is using that carrier grade NAT, it's gonna only be able to send out local addresses, RFC 1918 addresses, not a normal public IP address. So you need to uncheck this and everything will work good with T-Mobile and PFSense. So overall, I'm really happy with my T-Mobile 5G home internet service. I'm definitely planning on keeping it for a considerable period of time. The way I have my network set up right now is everybody on my Wi-Fi network and all pretty much anything besides my desktop is using this as the main internet connection, including Home Assistant for outgoing notifications. I do have PFSense set up to automatically fail over to my Comcast account, which I didn't think was gonna be the case when I set this up. I thought this was gonna be the backup, but it's honestly working so great. The speeds are awesome that I just made it my main connection for anything else besides my desktop. Thanks everybody for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next video, which I actually talk about my new standing desk from Uplift. Stay tuned for that video.